At our recent Lockdown Live Feed event, we were in the privileged position of being able to welcome world-renowned lighting journalist Ray Maloney to host a webinar and deliver his presentation, The 30 Rules of Lighting. We're now very pleased to be able to present this as a series of videos, starting off with this first one, which covers rules one to five. So without further ado, we'll hand over to Ray. Okay, great. Thank you, Joe. Much appreciated. Um, just a word about myself. I, I'm not a lighting designer. I'm not an electrician. Um, I'm just somebody who's been writing about lighting for a long time, and we've been running lighting awards, and I've been sort of immersed in it. And these are just uh, tips and things I've picked up uh, over the years. Uh, I call them rules, but of course, rules are there to be broken. Uh, so it's a little bit provocative, and it's designed really to get you to think you know, next time you're lighting a space and, you, you know, the default is putting down lights, it's just to stop and think, is there a way we could do this a bit more creatively, a bit differently, or that would lead to a better outcome? Yeah, so um, this this little talk won't turn you into a lighting designer. Lighting designers actually exist. It's a profession. There's probably a good few thousand of them around the world. Uh, this is actually a genuine uh, Australian uh, lighting designer, hence his, his shorts. I think his name is George Boots. Christopher Boots, sorry, is his name. Um, as I say, these guys are paid all day, every day to think about where to put the lights and what lighting to use because it's become a very specialist uh, profession. But uh, sadly, we can't always have a lighting designer on every single project, on every single building. So um, it's incumbent on us to come up with some designs ourselves sometimes. So I just I just preface it like this. So this won't turn you into a lighting designer, but hopefully it will stop and make you think a little bit about lighting next time you've got a lighting project. So uh, a bit provocative. I hate pendants. I think, you know, you go into somebody's home, you go into somebody's home and this is what you see. And they you know, house builders love pendants because they're cheap. You put one in the middle of a sitting room and uh, job done. And you have terrible lighting, really. That You know, no matter what the design, they put a little bit of light in the, on the ceiling or worse, they just throw light all over the space. They flatten the space. It's just not good lighting. You tend to get a lot of glare from the light fitting. Um, it's just not a pleasant space to be in, and I'm surprised people are happy to sit in spaces. But you know, you go around your, uh, your towns and villages and cities of the UK, and you drive past somebody's uh, living room, and this is what you see, and it's very, very sad. And house builders have got to take a lot of blame for this. However, I think pendants have a role, and they can look fantastic. I mean, this is a great pendant, a famous design called the artichoke. It looks great but it's not doing the lighting work. It has got, if we took that pendant away, it would still be a great, a well-lit space because of all the other stuff going on there. And again here, these pendants look fantastic. It's a, it's a classic design, a great design, but they're not doing very much lighting work. The lighting is being done here by these downlights, but they look fantastic, these, these uh, luminaires. They just glow gently and they become a decorative focus uh, and and they add beauty and uh, you know they punctuate the space. So pendants are great when they're there to look pretty, but not to do any jobs. So I just I'll just vary that rule. Is there a ditch the pendant? Don't use it as the main light source. Just it's there to look pretty. And I'm going to tell you to ditch something else now. You're going to I'm going to ask you to ditch the downlight. I know that's a big ask. I know I'll have to prize the downlight from your cold dead fingers, but down lights don't make for great lighting. I know back in the 80s they were oh they were trendy. They were everybody looked glamorous with these down lights, but it's not good lighting. And I want you to think, can I do a project without down lights? And that's I, a des lighting designer friend of mine says that he tries to do that. How can I do this without down lights? So here they are, a row of down lights. So what we've got at, at this happens a lot in in apartments or buildings with l low ceilings. You just get this flattening a plane of light all everywhere, and it's it's not good lighting. So we've got to stop and think, how can we do this differently? And the reason down lights are bad, and I'll show you, is the next slide, which is this is this is a uh, special software that you know shows you where the light lives. So what you get with down lights is you get this the top third 
of the ceiling is dark. You get this sort of scalloping. It's very muddy lighting, and you just you basically light the floor. Um, if you've ever stood under a a a, a downlight, they don't light people very well. In fact, if you look at Joe now, I don't really everybody can see you, Joe. But you know, you you've got panda eyes. Your eyes are dark. You get lighting on people's foreheads on their nose. People just don't look well. You can't see the the human face and the nuances and the sort of you know it, it it's just a terrible way to to light a human being. I'm going Thank bald you. as well, right? You might want to point that out. <laughs> so am I. So am I. So that's why I doubly hate downlights as well. So how can I do this without pendants or downlights? So I do have a solution. It's coming. Light the walls, right? This is something that people don't do. And the reason why I want you to light the walls is because that is in your visual plane. You don't look up at the ceiling. You don't look down at the, the what is in your visual field is our walls so i mean look at this here you don't apart from those pendants at the left lighting walls it works that's what you see yeah this project is you know they've got uh recessed concealed lighting lighting the walls that looks like a that's a lovely space you don't think there's anything weird going on with the lighting there that's just a great space and again here you've got you know concealed lighting hidden behind a lower draft um on the ceiling and obviously you've got these, these these tiles which are very reflective creating this wonderful that's a wonderful space to be in absolutely and that is you know lighting lighting the walls light the ceiling lighting the ceiling because that's what we're used to that is what human beings are used to we're used to this bright brightness above us so i mean look at this this is lovely and it is you know they've got some lead strip uh, mounted on a you know the, the the picture rail or in some extrusion and it's like that's, that's really nice pleasant place to be and again here this is this is a bit of a cliche loads of hotels a lot of apartments are lit like this with the with, but it's it's nice it's it it's it's very pleasant and then it's you know the lighting of the ceiling is complemented by some you know uh, table lamps down lights etc and they've got a lovely ceiling here. Um, but again, look how lovely that is. You know, an uplit ceiling where you have the concealed lighting le uh, lead strip. So that's a that's a really, really pleasant space. And you don't go in there and think, oh, there's a lot of lighting going on. You just think, wow, what an amazing ceiling. And this is a, this is a very arty uh, installation where they've used um, conduit. Uh, which has been sprayed black, and they have cut the conduit uh, uh, and used lead tape again. But what a dramatic! I think this won an award actually in our, in the Global Light and Design Awards, just to show you the sort of things that you you can do when you really when you really go crazy. Uh, you, uh, I call the I call them lead tape. People in the industry call it lead tape, but I think lead strip is more common um, among electrical contractors. I mean, uh, lead strip, what can I say about it? It's just a fantastic invention of the last 10 years. And I know you guys have started to do a video series about this, and I would recommend that people catch up with that. The um, lead tape is just a, gr a really useful tool and a fantastic um, piece of lighting kit. You know, here's very simple, very simple, just on top of, a, on top of an IKEA you know bookshelf picking up the ceiling very simple effect but looks fantastic you know and lead tape um it's not expensive it, it's reliable it just it works really well and then you can just really go mad with all these when you get a, a, a situation where there's a lot of um where there's lots of spaces where you can conceal the lead tape and here again that's the picture from originally it's just a, a wonderful tool obviously you have to think about all the usual things we think about with lighting, the, the color temperature is important, making sure that that matches. Um, also be careful about thermals because LEDs get hot and you may need to cool them down with, with some aluminum profile, etc. cetera. Um, but I think the eFix videos in this go into a bit more depth and I definitely commend those. And here again, you know, in an apartment or whatever, very simple. Um, and often people bring in coving and, and extrusions to as a place to put the 
with the uplights, but they lead tape. Great in a bathroom, absolutely brilliant because you've got lots of places where you can put um, uh, lead strip, like under basins, under baths, under toilets. Um, and you don't need, if a bathroom doesn't have, isn't dark, you know, the light bounces around, you don't need a lot of light. You know, that is, that is adequate lighting for a bathroom. Um, so that's good. And again, that looks fantastic. No down lights. So uh, there, it's perfect. And again, just conceal uh, above and below um, these uh, mirror units. And then you've got lighting, integrated lighting in the, in the mirror units as well. So thank you very much, Ray, for covering those first five rules for us there. I'm sure you'll agree that that was really insightful and we're really looking forward to the next instalment. So to that end, don't miss out on part two, where we'll consider some more of those essential rules for lighting.